fatal review shows out there. So join us, 11 p.m., seven nights a week. to you. This is Breakfast with Stephen and Anne. It is 8.45. Yeah, we're going to go through the newspapers now, and we were going to show you some of the headlines from the front pages, but basically they're all saying how we're going to have terrible winter blackouts. But there is a huge proviso to that, because that is a worst-case scenario of a worst-case scenario. Yes. Most people, most of the experts seem to be agreeing today. Um, however, we've got Claire Pearsall with us and Benjamin Butterworth to have a look at the stories in more detail. And Claire, you were talking about Leeds are taking a bit of an extreme attitude to the energy crisis. Yeah, they are the latest city to cancel their Christmas market, bonfire and fireworks evenings due to uh, budget pressures. Budget right. pressures. Budget pressures. But then when you look at it, Leeds City Council said it couldn't spare the £200,000 it needed to uh, run its six bonfire night events. Now, right. I think that... Do they need six, necessarily? I think that's probably quite hefty. And well, it, I suppose it's a big region, isn't it? If you only do one, yeah, how I mean, do you do it? What I about the Christmas markets, though? Because surely that's important, uh, for, yeah. that's important for small businesses, mm. for those independent retailers and all that sort of thing. But it does feel as if uh, some of the market traders that are coming over are coming over from the EU, and there are some visa concerns. Uh. Now that, obviously, we don't have the freedom of movement, um, and it looks like it's uh, frankly... Frankfurt people coming over to do the sort of German Christmas market feel. Mm. But I agree with you. I think it's brilliant for local businesses mm. to, go, to come out to these oh, to the community. Mm -hmm. Of course. They're lovely community events. Though, they are. They? My village holds a, a firework evening and it is just run by volunteers. We all pay a, uh, you know, a ticket to, to be there, which is not that expensive. And it's one of the really lovely evenings where the whole village actually just turns out. Nobody's having Facebook disputes with each other, and it's a stunning event. <laughs> it's one of those things that I think brings everybody together, and it's talked about for, yeah, for days absolutely. afterwards, and everybody has their photos up. So I think it's a real shame, but I can understand that £200,000 for a council to spend at the moment it's is a lot of excessive. It is. It's understandable, but you wonder whether they can ticket it, because... At the same time, surely you could cover that cost by just, you know, two, three pounds for, for mm. those people. I think back to when I, I grew up in a, a village in the northwest and, and bonfire night, you know, you'd always go out, all the village would come out yeah. and, and celebrate that and get together. You know, it's a real odd moment. And, you know, Manchester's Christmas markets are usually absolutely rammed with people. Yeah. And it's really small businesses that, that fill those out. You know, they all have tiny little, you know, shed yeah, sheds. Trade stores and, the, yeah. Sheds. Yeah, it's yeah. all got the sheds out. I know, I like a Christmas market. Oh, market, like Christmas markets are lovely. But I think there's a big difference between a village bonfire, which is just organised, and then these bigger events in towns. And so they spend a fortune on fireworks. Right. And yeah. it's all it's healthy. literally money going up in smoke at the moment. If they do. And, you know, you're looking at the sort of numbers here, uh, an event in Round Hay Park, which is normally open to 70,000 spectators. So, you know, OK, my village only has <laughs> six and a half thousand people. <laughs> um, so I appreciate it's on a different scale, but 70,000, I think you have the expense of the fireworks. You also have the security to keep people safe and stop any... It's a big question. Behavior. Question, isn't it as we face Christmas while well, we're talking about the power outages the possibility of we're talking about the cost of living crisis do we stop do, do we cancel Christmas no we don't cancel it clearly but and we've been through years of that haven't we do we just sort of pull back on Christmas this year? And, I, and I think you're right I think we all do need to look at perhaps what we used to do maybe we don't need such sort of glitzy markets I don't I just I don't want councils to become fun police by saying well we can't mm. have it I think that community Communities need it. Inner cities probably more so, given the stresses and strains on, on that kind of living at the moment. So maybe we ought to go back to almost back to basics, not have quite so glitzy Christmas markets, maybe have lo more local traders coming out. Sounds like an community. election slogan there. Does it? I could lend that out to someone. Mm, and to be fair, it did very well. If you're at a bonfire, at least you can keep warm for the evening. Mm -hmm. yeah. so and you're at problem. the front, I've always noticed, yeah. Um, let's talk about the National Health Service. 
and they're, what they're going to do about patients who miss appointments. Well, this is an idea that's been briefed to the Sun. I think it strikes me as not a bad idea that basically there's 7 million people on the waiting list for an operation, 338,000 of those have been waiting more than a year. And so NHS bosses are suggesting that if you turn down two appointments, then you'll be taken off the proper list, the main list, and other people will be fast-tracked in front of your place. So if you, if you don't make the effort to turn up, to be uh, flexible with your time to get the NHS appointment, then other people can take it. Yeah. I think that's, that's fair enough. enough. Yeah, I, I do. I mean, how many times have we sat there in a, in a GP's waiting room previously uh, or in a hospital waiting room and oh, names were called out and people just no turn yeah. up? And I think yeah. if you really want the treatment, it doesn't matter if it's inconvenient to mm. you. The fact is you're going to get that treatment. I had a physio appointment made for me when, when I was suffering with my uh, knee and um, I totally forgot to keep the appointment. And they wrote me a really snotty text saying, you missed your appointment. Ah, oh, geez, that's it. Yeah. You're off. Yeah. And I think that's fair enough. And if yeah. I want to go back to them, I've got to absolutely grovel by the sound. Yes. But I actually thought that was fair treatment. Yeah, well, yeah. It was my fault. Yeah. And I think sometimes it. people think, well, it's it's free, it's not costing me mm. anything. But it does cost. It costs people mm. time. And other people would have taken that appointment yeah. if you didn't want it. Exactly. Um, I was in A&E on Tuesday. Um, not, it wasn't me. Uh, it was my, my husband. Uh, but eight, I was just looking at the picture. Eight hours and 15 minutes was the waiting time. Oh. And you just think... You know, that's that's where we are, and that's... In A&E? In A&E, eight hours eight and 15 hours? minutes. Gosh. But, it was, but that's what you've got to... You know, if that's where we are now, then we need to really crack down on... And I know it's slightly different in A&E, but we need to crack down on people who are not turning up for appointments or, or whatever. For whatever, yeah. something's got to be done. But actually, people go to A&E because, because they, they can't, can't get, get an yeah. appointment. Yeah. I know. But, I know. You know, Therese Coffey, the, the health secretary, she said in her speech at Conservative Party conference that she, in June of this year, waited nine hours in A&E and then was told to come back the next day. Oh. And she knew that her ailment couldn't be resolved the next day. She needed to sort it out faster. So she just went to another hospital and did the sitting process again in their A&E. So, you know, 8 hours, 15 minutes is almost a decent time compared to what some scary, people get. Though, it? it is scary. scary. Yeah. 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 Um, who's got a very big Uber bill? Ah, oh, so this is a, a chef who was charged £35,000 <laughs> for a 15-minute Uber journey. Um, how? <laughs> either the driver mixed up the town and he was going uh, from Hyde to Ashton under Line and the driver somehow confused it with a town of the same name 10,000 miles away near Adelaide in South Australia. Right. Now, it does kind of beg the question, what was the driver, driver thinking? Yeah, mm. what was he thinking? Because when you put something into a, a navigation system, it comes up with a big map and it tells you how long it's going to take to get there and how many miles and all the rest of it. Surely he didn't sort he of... He thought, think, how, how am I going to do that journey? Yeah, and mm. he didn't think. So, uh, obviously, the poor man involved, his uh, bank didn't let the £35,000 go through. Good. Didn't have that cleared in his account, strangely, and have since charged him £10.73 for the journey and <laughs> apologised. <laughs> but I do think that it's incumbent upon these companies to put safeguards in so things like that can't happen. I can yeah, understand... But, but, also, but also, if you accept an Uber though. journey, you get quoted and then you have to accept it. And I think that... So the, the guy shouldn't is, have accepted it. He'd been quoted £10, which is what he accepted. Oh. And then when the driver turned up, somehow he's... There was a confusion on the system. Yes. You, you do sort of think that there should be something built in that, that doesn't take you have, out of the United Kingdom 10,000 miles away. They should have let him have the journey for free. Yes, that. yes. I'm still charging I tell you what, you've got to watch out, though, when you, when you do tap something in. I was at a restaurant once, and um, they brought the little thing that you put your card oh, in. Oh, yes. And uh, I tapped my PIN number, and then put that in as a tip. Oh. Four-figure PIN number, remember? Oh. And it was, it was the, 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 the <laughs> waitress actually said, are you sure you want to tip that much? You know, several thousand pounds. And I, oh, no, that was my PIN number. I put it in at the wrong point. Did so you be know? very careful. Yeah, they were, able, really to, they were able to oh, delete this. Yes. <laughs> Honestly. Well, I'm glad she noticed, though. That's, do you know what I, I hate? Honest. Is that I, I use the contactless, and they put the machine towards you, so you just see the bit you tap. You don't... Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. And I said, no, turn it around. I want to Ooh. see the 
the figure that, mm. you, that you're going to yeah, pop. Make sure you're very that. careful these days, yeah, don't you? I know. I know. Uh, look, thank you both. It's been very good to see you both this morning, Claire and Ben. Yes, thank you very um, much. I just have to say, on saving energy, um, Ian's been in touch. Why not have a ban on electronic advertising? You know, those big oh, billboards. You those huge, yes. You see, that would save a lot of money. Well, would it? Well, I wonder. They if, are if, all over the place. If they were all turned off, I mean, put each one would yes, save a lot. See, they money, provide but... revenue, don't they, though? They and those advertisers do. are paying revenue to the people who own the advertising hoardings and whatever. Everything has a knock on effect. Yeah. Uh, Kathleen says, why can't the utility companies pay for a campaign on the blackouts? Uh, Turkey's voting for Christmas, though, isn't it? As they're be. making the money out of us, why should we have to pay for it? Mm -hmm. Uh, David in Burgess Hill says, I support the winter blackouts. <laughs> uh, I need all the help I can get uh, I can get to get the kids off tab the tablets. Yeah, well, you yeah. know. It's nice to take a brighter... Uh, <laughs> Talking about side. relationships, though, Elisa yeah. in Chelsea said, never mind keeping the spark in a relationship, just trying to find someone to have a relationship with is hard enough. Especially if you're doing using an online app and there's a power cut. Yeah, oh dear. Uh, you don't stand a chance. See the knock-on effect. Ah, oh, you see, it's all there. Uh, look, don't go anywhere. We've got all the top stories heading away in just a minute after the weather.